Joseph is one of the most fascinating characters in the Bible. Born in Canaan, he left his father's home and experienced a series of divine encounters through dreams and visions, foreshadowing his future as a leader and savior of the tribes of Israel. This divine favor sparked jealousy among his brothers who conspired to sell him into slavery. Joseph's journey led him to ancient Egypt where he initially served in the house of Potiphar, a commander of Pharaoh. Despite his loyalty and hard work, he was unjustly accused by Potiphar's wife of attempting to assault her, which led to his imprisonment. Even in prison, Joseph's gift for interpreting dreams brought him favor. After two years, he was summoned to interpret Pharaoh's dreams, predicting seven years of abundance followed by seven years of famine. His accurate interpretation and wise counsel elevated him to the position of governor over all Egypt. During his time as governor, Joseph had two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, solidifying his legacy as a pivotal figure in the survival and prosperity of his people. Before we get started, please take a moment to subscribe to our channel. By subscribing, you'll never miss an update on our latest videos exploring the ancient world. If you find this video insightful, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below sharing your thoughts and any additional insights you might have. We love hearing from our community. Don't forget to share this video with others who share our passion for biblical history and the hidden stories of the past. Joseph's Marriage and Children, a deep dive into an Egyptian tale. The Saga of Joseph, a narrative that threads its way through both the Hebrew Bible and Egyptian chronicles, revealing the intricate tapestry of ancient interconnections. Joseph, once a Semitic slave, rose to prominence as Zaphonath Panea, the venerated governor of Egypt. His story is not just a tale of personal triumph, but also a bridge between two rich cultures. When Joseph ascended to power, he married Asenath, a woman steeped in the traditions and lineage of ancient Egypt. Asenath, whose very name evokes the divine breath of Egypt's pantheon, was the daughter of Potiphera, the esteemed priest of On, also known as Heliopolis. This sacred city, a hub of sun worship, underscores the spiritual gravitas of Asenath's heritage. She descended from the lineage of Ham through Ra, the sun god, placing her within the noble strata of Egyptian society. Their union was not merely a personal alliance, but a symbol of the fusion of Semitic and Egyptian worlds. Joseph and Asenath bore two sons, each named with profound significance reflective of their unique heritage. Manasseh, the firstborn, whose name in Hebrew and Aramaic, Manashe, means causing to forget, was so named by Joseph to signify his journey of overcoming hardship and embracing his new life in Egypt. Manasseh's birth, occurring before the dramatic migration of the Israelites to Egypt, positioned him as a pivotal figure in the unfolding story of the Hebrew people's sojourn in this ancient land. Ephraim, their second son, whose name means fruitful, encapsulated Joseph's flourishing in a foreign land. Ephraim's birth heralded a time of prosperity and growth, reflecting Joseph's rise from the depths of despair to the heights of power. The names of Joseph's sons, steeped in Semitic tradition, were a testament to his roots. Even as he navigated his life in the Egyptian epicenter of culture and power, their story, woven into the broader narrative of the Israelites, illustrates the rich, multicultural mosaic of the ancient Near East. Through Joseph and Asenath, we glimpse the interconnectedness of civilizations, each leaving an indelible mark on the other, forging a shared history that transcends time. Hyksos and Semitic influence, the origins of an Aramean woman. The question of where this Aramean woman came from is intriguing. For those who follow this channel, you may already be familiar with my discussions about the Hyksos in Egypt. For those who aren't, the Hyksos, known in Egyptian as Heka Kasut, which means rulers of foreign lands, were groups of Semitic peoples who entered Egypt around 1900 BC. They settled in Egypt, leaving behind a significant legacy. 
these Semitic peoples not only integrated into Egyptian society, but also ascended to positions of power, including having Semitic pharaohs and governors, such as the biblical figure Joseph and other administrators and rulers of the time. The Hyksos hold historical significance as the first foreign rulers to conquer and control Egypt. They likely originated from Canaan, a region now encompassing Israel, Palestine, Lebanon and parts of Syria before eventually settling in the Nile Delta region of Lower Egypt. The Hyksos dynasties ruled Egypt for about 150 years, establishing their capital in Avaris in the Nile Delta. During their reign, they introduced new military techniques, weaponry and administrative practices that significantly influenced Egyptian culture. The fact that Manasseh married a woman of Aramean or Syrian origin is quite intriguing. It indicates that Semitic traditions were maintained despite Joseph's wife being Egyptian. Manasseh's marriage to a woman of Semitic origin reflects the continuity of Israelite traditions, which also have Semitic roots. This is clearly depicted in sacred scriptures. For example, Abraham instructed his servant, who was of Syrian origin, to bring women from his own relatives for Isaac to marry. Similarly, when Isaac blessed Jacob, he instructed him not to marry Canaanite women, but instead to choose wives from his own relatives who were Aramean or other Semitic peoples. Joseph's second son, Ephraim now concerning Joseph's second son, he had a second son named Ephraim. According to the book of Genesis, Ephraim's mother was Asenath, making him Manasseh's brother and Jacob's grandson. Ephraim was born before the arrival of the Israelites in the land of Canaan. The book of Numbers lists three sons of Ephraim, Shuthala, Beka, and Tahan. However, in 1 Chronicles, eight sons are mentioned, including Ezra and Eliad, who were killed trying to steal cattle from local inhabitants. After their deaths, Ephraim had another son named Beriah. He was an ancestor of Joshua, son of Nun, who led the Israelite tribes in the conquest of Canaan. According to the Bible, the narrative about King Jeroboam, who became the first king of the northern kingdom of Israel, reveals that he was also from the house of Ephraim, a descendant of Ephraim. As for the meaning and origin of the name Ephraim, Joseph gave this name to his second son, explaining, God has made me fruitful in the land of my affliction. Some interpreters of Genesis relate the name Ephraim to the Phoenician Hebrew root, meaning to be fruitful, referring to Joseph's ability to produce children, especially while in Egypt. Therefore, the name Ephraim can mean, I will be fruitful. Another meaning of the name Ephraim comes from the Assyrian Babylonian language, Akkadian, and it offers an interesting interpretation in the context of the verse where Joseph names Ephraim. This interpretation derives from the terms U plus Rim, resulting in Grim, which could mean the grace of the Most High or graced by the Most High. This Assyrian Babylonian meaning makes more linguistic sense considering Joseph's native Semitic culture. In Semitic cultures of antiquity, the life of a man of Semitic origin deeply valued prosperity through offspring, with having many children being one of the greatest indicators of success and blessing. Ancient Semites placed extreme importance on the ability to generate numerous descendants. Jacob's Blessing and Ephraim's Precedence the eventual precedence of the tribe of Ephraim is an intriguing theme, especially considering the narrative of Jacob, blind and on his deathbed, blessing Ephraim before Manasseh. Although Manasseh was the firstborn and traditionally the one to be blessed first, Jacob blessed Ephraim first, which is quite curious. The text describing this blessing mentions the word sekel, which classical rabbinic literature interprets in various esoteric ways. Some rabbinic sources associate sekel with mind or wisdom, indicating that Jacob was fully aware of whom he was blessing. 
Other rabbinic sources suggest that Sekel implies Jacob was transferring the primacy from Manasseh to Ephraim, yet other sources interpret Sekel as a symbol of Jacob's power to instruct and guide through the Holy Spirit. These interpretations showcase the depth of the narrative and the complexity of Semitic traditions and beliefs, where Jacob's blessing reflects both divine wisdom and a reconfiguration of the destiny of the tribes of Israel. In classical rabbinic sources, Ephraim is described as modest and selfless. These texts assert that his modesty and selflessness were so profound that Jacob prophesied Ephraim should have precedence over Manasseh, his older brother. According to these sources, Jacob was considered righteous enough for God to uphold the blessing in his honor, making Ephraim the leader of all the tribes. This can be seen as a foreshadowing of Joshua, who would later lead all the tribes. Linguistic Influence of Manasseh and Ephraim Regarding the linguistic issue of the tribes of Manasseh and Ephraim, it is known they were of mixed descent because their mother, Asenath, was Egyptian. Therefore, it is correct to state that they acquired considerable knowledge of the Egyptian language because of their mother, a woman of Egyptian origin. Additionally, they spoke fluently their father's language, Aramaic, and later learned the Canaanite language, which is now known as Hebrew. An interesting example of this is recorded in the book of Judges 12, where it is reported that when Ephraimite fugitives tried to cross the Jordan River, they were questioned about their origin. If identified as Ephraimites, they were asked to pronounce the word Shibboleth. However, due to their Egyptian heritage, they could not pronounce it correctly using the form Sibboleth. This linguistic difficulty resulted in their identification and consequently their sentence of death. This can be interpreted as a linguistic legacy of the Ephraimites, influenced by their Egyptian origin affecting their pronunciation of the Phoenician or Hebrew language. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you've made it this far, please like and share this video with others interested in the history of the sons of Joseph, Manasseh and Ephraim. May God bless you and see you soon.